Good evening. Three friends caught driving at incredible rates of speed. Police say speed was definitely a factor. RCMP caught this Ford Fiesta speeding. But police say they're waiting for you. Speed is going to be a factor in this collision. When this baby hits 88 miles per hour, you're, protesting you're going to see some serious shit. I saw this in a movie about a bus that had to speed around the city. You know how fast you were going? 65? 63. I think it was called the bus that couldn't slow down. My name is Chris, and I'm breaking the law. How? Speeding. Why am I risking a $138 fine and not driving with the flow of traffic? To make a point about speed kills. ICBC, the cops, and the media all tell us that speed kills, and show us news story after news story about horrific late-night stupidity-fueled crashes, and then brand regular drivers who exceed the speed limit as deviant criminals. Don't get me wrong, I'm not saying we should be able to go as fast as we want, or that speeding isn't necessarily dangerous, but many speed limits are set far too low for conditions, and that seems to be where the majority of the ticketing is. And thus, speed kills your pocketbook. By the way, for those of you not from British Columbia, ICBC is our local state-run insurance monopoly. Huh. That logo doesn't look very socialist. That's more like it. I want to start my argument here, on Marine Drive in Vancouver. It's a six-lane isolated road with a divided center, and the limit is 50 kilometers an hour. That's 31 for you American viewers. For those of you out there that believe speeders get what they deserve, let me ask you this. How stupidly low does a speed limit have to be before you'll complain? The limit here is the same as nearby commercial drive, where it's only safe to do 50 a small fraction of the time. This limit makes sense. It's the fastest you can go under ideal conditions. Back on Marine Drive, the Vancouver police love hiding in the forest and nailing speeders here. They even brag about it on their Facebook blog. Traffic enforcement wrote 50-plus tickets on one stretch of Marine Drive over the weekend. What are your ideas of how to get people to slow down and obey speed limits? More enforcement? More education? Stricter penalties? Hey, VPD, if your method of improving road safety is soliciting internet comments, we're in trouble. Let's step back a second. We need rules on the roads. But if we're paying for these roads, we have the right to demand that these rules make sense. Stop at red lights? Makes sense. Slow around schools or urban areas? Also makes sense, if you actually like kids or people. Allowing politicians to set speed limits that don't reflect the road engineering, and then getting the police to fine and then publicly bitch about the speeders, doesn't make sense and it reflects poorly on the province. Canada has some of the lowest highway speed limits of the industrialized world, and I want to be clear, I'm ranting about highways, roads with no pedestrians, intersections, etc. If you compare us to Germany, yeah, bear with me, where they have no speed limits on large portions of their highways, our vehicle fatality rate is over double per capita, almost double per 100,000 vehicles, and about 20% higher per billion vehicle miles traveled. I know what you're going to say, the Germans have more training, better cars, blah blah blah, and you might be right. But why don't we concentrate on that instead of lowering speed limits and fining people? The Germans don't have speed kills, possibly because the German word for speeding is so long that it won't fit on the screen of a German newscast. The German road safety program is called Hunte vom Gas, which literally translates to down from the gas. I'll assume this isn't a fart joke or a Hitler reference, though with the Germans you're never quite sure. Their campaign targets all types of bad driving, and the only mention of inappropriate speed I could find is buried. My argument rests on two points. Point one, the roads are safest when everyone's traveling at the same speed and in the same direction and paying attention. <laughs> Point two, this is from a report on BC speed limits prepared for the BC Ministry of Transportation by two, probably not PE teachers, and whatever an EIT is. The majority of motorists drive at a speed they consider reasonable and safe for road, traffic, and environmental conditions. Posted limits, which are set higher or lower than dictated by roadway and traffic conditions, are ignored by the majority of motorists. This relates to something called the Solomon Curve, which basically says that if traffic's flowing at a certain speed, the farther from the average a vehicle is traveling, the more dangerous it is. So, if the speed limit is below the upper limit of the safe majority, the people who do the speed limit become hazards to themselves and others. Or, in other words, Have you ever noticed when you're driving that anyone who's driving slower than you is an idiot? <laughs> And anyone driving faster than you is a maniac! <laughs> when speed limits are too low, you get a lot of tension on the road. For example, the passing lane. Most places have get-out-of-the-left-lane laws, 
But what if the speed limits are too low? You have to be passing on the left, but you also have to obey the law, and it ends up being impossible to legally pass. Take this example. There's a vehicle on the left lane holding up traffic at 120 in a 100 zone. He's speeding, impeding traffic, and not moving out of the lane. And it's a cop. You know, if you're in a fully marked police car, you could at least pretend the law applied to you as well. But where do the current speed limits come from? Speed limits in North America were mostly set back in the day when cars had terrible handling, braking, and fuel mileage, and really liked to explode. But even though modern cars are much safer, speed limits generally haven't changed, and many are even lower. Why? As it turns out, governments and insurance companies make money from traffic fines. A lot of money. And they've gotten quite used to it over time. Also, no matter where you raise a speed limit, you'll have people like this. <laughs> As an example, in Winnipeg, the engineers went to the city and said, hey, look, you should raise the speed limit along whatever stretch of road. And the city took the recommendation off their website, ignored it, and continued ticketing people. Still think speeders deserve what they get? There are two parties other than the government to blame here, the police and the media. Let's start with the fuzz. If you actually want people to slow down, well, let's let Simon Baker explain it. Speed traps, legalized extortion. You want people to slow down? Park out in the open where they can see you, but no, you lay in wait like thieves in the night. You will pay the ticket today. I'm not going to pay it. Jake, I'm not paying it. I'm stop, not paying it. Stop. Extortionist. But when the cops are visible, people do slow down, but you don't make any money. Foster, how many tickets did you issue last week? Uh, I don't have my figures here in front of me. I, Three. I, I can't make them speed. Try hiding. And grow a goddamn mustache, why hey, don't you? Hey, I haven't shaved in two weeks. Now, the media. The media can screw things up two ways here. First, they just automatically blame speed, and second, they get facts wrong. For example, if you have a story that contains... Only at this point we are not ruling out either alcohol or uh, speed as factors. You can't start your newscast with... The deadly result of four young men in a car going too fast. Abbotsford police are trying to determine if alcohol was also involved. You do realize we can rewind TV now, right? And where did you get it as fact that they were going too fast? Are you sure it was the police? Are you sure it wasn't nothing? Oh yeah. Next story. The Lions Gate was closed for seven hours when a speeding car spun out of control and slammed into a transit bus. Brian Coxford has more. Curb lane 75, center lane white car 88. That's our record, 91. Everybody's been speeding. We haven't seen a single person not, that was doing the speed limit here. Police radar couldn't track any drivers except a bus that were doing the speed limit. Okay, let me stop you right there. I assume that in order to be a traffic cop and a reporter, you need to be able to both count and read at the same time consistently. So when you point us to a yellow sign, you have to know that yellow signs are advisory speeds in higher speed limit areas. Speed limits are white, like this one seen here a few seconds earlier in your story. Now, excessive speed in BC is more than 40 over the limit, and this sign says 60. So when Sergeant Kronsky says... 91, so that's an excessive there. He could get towed for seven days, impounded for seven days, and a $368 fine for that. It says several things. One, it looks like you would have illegally seized someone's car. Even if the limit is 50, your true speed laser unit isn't accurate enough for you to be sure he was excessively speeding, so you'd be charging him with something that you're not sure he's guilty of. And it's situations like this that are the number one argument against immediate roadside impoundments. Two, nobody who worked on this story paid any attention to the facts. Three, the cops are likening the ordinary safe actions of everyday drivers, like this guy doing 69, giggity giggity, with the one idiot that loses control at night and slams into a bus. And the media are perfectly happy to parrot that narrative without doing a shred of investigative journalism or fact-checking on their own. What's worse, the cop's narrative at the end now just looks terribly contrived. They show up on a Sunday morning to tell them that their 18-year-old son is dead. Something of that sort. I've done that. And it, it, uh, it rips your heart out. You never forget it. Yes, Sergeant Kravyansky, if you only ticketed more afternoon commuters, those stupidity-induced teenage late-night fatalities wouldn't have happened. So how do you make roads safer? Well, let's go back to the report. The normally careful and competent actions of a reasonable person should be considered legal. Thank you, Captain Obvious. 
A speed limit should seem too fast for a majority of users, or it is not a maximum limit. Good, good, I'm learning. A speed limit should be set so that the majority of motorists observe it voluntarily, and enforcement can be directed to the minority of offenders. Hey, you didn't know that? Yeah, you didn't know that? Generally, the posted limit should be set near the 85th percentile speed. I think he's talking to you. Let's check out the 85th percentile back at our 50 zone. I asked the Vancouver police if I could borrow one of their wallet zappers, and they politely told me to f off. So I placed two cameras two seconds at 50 kilometers an hour apart and got an attractive volunteer to drive her car at exactly the speed limit to double check. Now, by judging the time it takes for a vehicle to go through, you can get their speed. So you sit there for a while, crunch some numbers, and get a curve that looks like this. The limit is 50, the 85th percentile is 79, and nobody, and I mean nobody, did anywhere near the speed limit. So why is the limit 50? And why are you all thinking I have too much time on my hands? You can argue that this might be a dangerous section of road and the city wants people to slow down, but if you look at ICBC's crash statistics since 2008, this is one of the least dangerous places in Vancouver to drive. Also, crashes have been going down in both the Lower Mainland and all of BC over the last five years. Fatal crashes in the Lower Mainland are down by half over a similar period of time. ICBC would argue that it's because of their road safety campaign, but the roads have been getting consistently safer in the industrialized world over the last hundred years. Since they started keeping track, vehicle fatalities in the U.S. per 100 million miles traveled have decreased from 24 in 1921 to 5 in 1960 to around 1 today. 100 million miles is enough to drive 40 kilometers to and from work for the next 8,000 years, which is about how long it takes to earn back the average arts degree. Even in Germany, the fatalities have dropped 70% since the 1990s. Though, that might be because the Germans are no longer constantly daydreaming of David Hasselhoff. You're in love with me. It's like a car crash. You just can't turn away. Anyway, it gets worse when you compare this stretch of road to a chunk nearby in Burnaby that's almost identical, with similarly few accidents, but the limit here is 70, and the police in Burnaby don't whine on Facebook about speeders. I'm not saying that nobody along Marine Drive deserves speeding tickets, since the few people the VPD clocked doing over 100k an hour are nowhere near traffic speed, but this whole speed kills mantra that's being shoved down our throats is, to quote Jeff Goldblum, That is one big pile of shit. So what happens when you increase speed limits? If you believe the Helen Lovejoys of the world, it'll look like this. Well, listen to this guy, who's either an actual cop or a really disappointing Staget attraction. Speed limits improve safety. In some cases, after careful analysis, raising the speed limit is the safest thing to do. Well, we have analysis. If you look at the 1997 Parker study, where they raised or lowered various speed limits all across the U.S. and then sampled 1.6 million cars, vehicle speeds really didn't change much. But here's the kicker. Crashes went up where the limit went down, and crashes went down where the limit went up. You heard that right. Higher limits meant fewer crashes. Here in British Columbia, raising the limit from 90 to 100 lowered the crash rate by 12.9% and 8.6% in their two test phases. So with all this evidence, what's the government done? On the Sea to Sky Highway, they improved the road from a dangerous two-lane windy road to a four-lane concrete median highway, didn't change the speed limit, and increased enforcement. Listen to them justify it. The Sea to Sky is of particular interest for law enforcement since it was upgraded for the Olympics. ICBC says accident claims along this stretch of road are down, but the risk of a deadly crash is deceptive. This highway, people feel like, well, the highway is safer, the design is better, perhaps I can go fast. Yes, you can go faster. Don't you get that physics doesn't change? And frankly, uh, physics hasn't changed. Damn it, that's my point. If you go faster than the speed limit, if you're traveling well in excess, you are at more risk of getting into an accident. Now that is a giant pile of not what the engineers said at all. This report listed dozens and dozens of roads where the speed limits should have been raised in 2003. We need our government to seriously look at this again. And you, my wonderful viewers, need to tell them to do it. Because when we hear things like this... Everybody's been speeding. We haven't seen a single person not, that was doing the speed limit here. It's not the drivers that are the problem. The government needs to use proper engineering criteria, like speed limits should seem fast and speed limits should be set near the 85th percentile. And all a token 10k an hour raise is going to do is make me write this. Go to these sites and email the powers that be with the links provided and tell them to give us speed limits that make sense.